Welcome, and it's time to talk XML. <coughs> this is definitely not a lot of people's favorite file format, and that's why we get a lot of folks asking, hey, can we do this with JSON? Ah. JSON is definitely more human readable, but a lot of the state of the art and what we deal with today in terms of config and validation skillets do require XML. So we wanna make sure the skillet builder community has a solid understanding of the lingo, the format, and the structure of the XML files. The first thing we wanna look at with XML is the formatting of the markup language. And if I pull up this example of HTML, you'll see a very similar uh, look and feel, right, to the content. HTML, which I have on the right, uses the idea of tags. You can see our header one tag on how I wanna display information on the screen. It has both a start and end tag. And XML is going to use a similar markup. You'll see here users with a start and end tag, permissions with a start and end tag. So this tagging model is pretty consistent. Uh, you can see through XML. And actually, it's this tagging model that eats up and creates a lot of that visual noise, right? Tags everywhere around the information. The other part of the markup language are attributes. And attributes are what we see in line that's built inside the tags. In this example of HTML, you'll see a style. We want to set the font to Coyer, or in case of an href, we want to set a URL value. XML also uses this concept of attributes. If you look at the user, you can see an entry name equal to admin. Name would be the attribute. Admin is the value of that attribute. Another place we can look at that, let me close this down, are under zones, as an example, in the config file. And this is where attributes are really required, is we have two entries, we need to differentiate them, and it's that attribute here for my two zones as an example of internet and internal. So we have the tags, inside the tags we may have attributes to further provide information. And then the last part that we have in HTML is just text. This is text that sits between the tags. In the case of XML, we do the same thing. In this case, you see a password hash. I have text, which is a hash of the password. I have super user, yes. Here we're setting text values to define information as part of the XML file. And in terms of HTML and the markup language, that's pretty much it. If you try to go to the structure of the file, which we we'll do next with HTML, it gets pretty confusing because HTML is all about visual information. XML, however, is really just a data store. It's about storing information for retrieval or configuration. Now, when we think about the data structure of XML, it is very different than HTML. HTML is about visual representation on the screen. XML is just a data store. So instead of HTML, as an example, what I'm going to do is shift gears here a little bit and go into a folder structure on my Mac looking at Finder. And what I've done is I've recreated parts of the configuration file as folders because that's really what the tags are. They're just telling you what folder, where that information is being stored. So if I close this up and I look at my top level here and I map this to my config file, what you'll see is I have three folders or three tags at the very top of the tree. Shared management config devices and the configuration for the firewall or panorama are gonna live underneath one of these three folders. If I open up management config again, what you'll see as an example, I have users, so the users folder, if you will. I have an entry admin with a specific user where I would put all the data, in this case, their password and their role. And that's all we're doing with XML is we're just creating these blocks of information that sit in different places or folders across the configuration file. Those blocks of information we call an XML element. And if I highlight this under the user admin, that's the element for a specific user. I could even go down into a subset of this for role-based, and that would be the element just for the role. So when we create uh, skillets, and we're creating the, grabbing these snippets of information, we can be very granular, we can be very coarse in terms of the size of the XML element that we would be configuring. That's the what. The where is where in the configuration file. We have to tell the API, we have to tell something 
where we want to place this element, this piece of information. The same example, I'm going to go back to my folders here. And if I did it in the folder world, uh, I'm going to list this out. Let me go down into management config. And what we would do here, we would think of the idea of a path. Config, management config, and using this Linux Unix E notation, there would be a forward slash separating them. And I'm going to users. So if I'm in the users folder, the path to that folder would be config, management config, users. XML is exactly the same. So if I pull up a couple of example XPaths here, and we just say XPath because it's a path like we see below, but it's XML, so we call it an XPath. And for the path to users, as you can see, the syntax is identical as what we would do in the Linux world. So you can see some of that correlation there. Where it's different is in cases where the tag includes an attribute, and I need to specify that. In my path example, if I cd to entry admin and do a path here, what you would see is, I again, I've just put the suffix here, so we would need to have that attribute in as part of the path because I may have different usernames to worry about. In the case of XPath, it's just the entry, the tag, and then we have this little piece of addendum information that's just the attribute and the value, which folder we want to go into, if you will. And that's the XPath. If I give you one last example, let's go down into zones, and this is where you can see two attribute names. We're going further down into the config file. Config, devices, there's a local host, there's a vSys. Which vSys do I want to go into? Again, I would specify that attribute. And then the zone, and that's where we keep the zone information. That's the idea of XPaths, where in the configuration file we want to do something. And then the XML element is what it is that we're going to configure. And you'll see as we work with XML, these two things are going to come up over and over again, the XPath and the element. The last thing we want to show with XML is this idea of config merging. How do we add or manipulate the configuration file? And as a user, if you're on the GUI or in the command line interface of the firewall or panorama, that's really what's going on behind the scenes. We're just manipulating this XML file. So what I'm going to do is I have this XML element to some of our new lingo here for a new user called Scott. I'm going to copy this. And if we were using the API, we would say, hey, I want to add this element. And we need to tell it where do we want to add this new element to create a new user. <clears throat> and what we know from the XPath, what we looked at before, is config, management, config, users. That's the XPath if I want to add that element for a new user. What this looks like manually, if I go into the configuration, I paste that in. The API call would do this config merge for me. Or if I'm on the GUI, it would do the config merge for me. And what you can see now is I have a new user. I have a new XML element. I put it under management or config, management, config users. And in the folder world, just to bring this last point home, this is a lot like me going in and creating a new user folder uh, for an entry user called Scott. And I would add that information. And that's all we're doing with config merge. We're just taking this block of information, these tags, these nested folders, and we're just manipulating and adding them into the config file based on the XPath where we want to make that configuration change. So at the end of the video talking about XML, we picked up really five parts of the lingo. One are the tags that looked a lot like that HTML tagging. These are the start and end tags that wrap the information. We have attributes and values that sit inside the tag to give a little additional information, especially if that tag is a name that's reused like entry. We have text values that are values we set, so these leaf nodes that provide information. A block of this sets of tags and attributes and, and text are XML elements. And then where we're going to put them, like config, manage config users, specify the XPath, where in the configuration file this information lives.